I wanted to do a sample midterm type question that looked at linear modeling with data and I thought that since Greta Thunberg was in the news this week um, speaking to the UN on climate change that maybe we could look at some climate change data. So I went to NASA and got their temperature anomaly data and uh, if you haven't heard of temperature anomaly before, that's fine. Um, what that means is um, NASA and a lot of people have been keeping track of the temperature of the planet at, at different locations all around the planet, but let's pretend we're just at one for right now. Um, and, and NASA uses this, this, three, this span of three decades, 1951 to 1980, is like a baseline temperature. All right, so that is their starting temperature. And when you hear the phrase anomaly, we're trying to figure out from year to year how much does the planet's temperature deviate from that average, from that baseline that they set up in between 1951 and 1980. So if you look at this data point here, 1960 comma negative 0.02, what that's saying is that in the year 1960, the planet was 0.02 degrees Celsius cooler than that baseline from 1951 to 1980. Whereas in 1970, our planet's temperature was 0.03 degrees hotter than that baseline that they set between 1951 and 1980. And then you can see as we move out to 2010, that in 2010, we are 0.73 degrees hotter than that baseline, and I should say 0.73 degrees Celsius hotter than that baseline that we set between 1951 and 1980. So any positive anomaly implies a hotter temperature and any negative anomaly implies a cooler temperature. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. It says find a linear equation for temperature for the temperature anomaly A when we are T years after 1960. So I see my base here. It's telling me to round to two decimal places. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to enter my data into my calculator and then I'll catch you in a bit. So just taking a look at my data, I, I always think it's a good idea before you run linear modeling that you check and make sure you have the same number of data values in L1 as L2, and I have six in each, but I also want to comment on my L1. So take a moment and see, in your L1, do you have 0 through 50, or do you have 1960 to 2010? And you might have the actual years, 1960 to 2010, but don't forget that they gave us this base year of 1960. And any time you want to calculate what year you're in, take your current year and subtract out your base year. So if you can do that, you'll figure out what your T value is. So for example, if I wanted to figure out the T value in 2010, I would take 2010 and I would subtract out my base year of 1960 and that would give me a value of 50 and that's why you see that 50 over there um, in that calculator or in that, in that um, list. So with that, once we've figured out what data we're going to put in, if I want to find this linear model, well, actually first, you know, I think I'm going to make a scatter plot. I always like to look at what I'm seeing. So let me hit second and y equals, and it looks like my plots are on, and I've got L1 against L2 with the scatter plot, so I'm actually ready to go. I can just hit the zoom 9. Let's see. That kind of looks like a line. I can kind of see the line going here. It looks like a positive positively sloped line. I see a little dip in temperature anomaly. And actually I can see that on my data sets too. You can see I went from a temperature anomaly of 0.45 to 0.40. All right, but if I want my linear model, let's do this. So we're gonna hit stat. We're gonna go to calc, option eight. I'm gonna go L1, comma, L2, comma, Y1. And Y1 starts with your VARS key. Hit the right arrow and I'm gonna hit enter three times. All right, and there's my linear model, I'll, and I'll write that down in just a moment, but I, I still want to take a look at the graph. I always like to see that it's going through, so that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how we get our linear model out of here. So I'm going to do some calculator commands, and it looks like this on my calculator. Ooh, I can't see this. Sorry, let me rerun linear regression so I can see it. All right, so it looks like we had y equaling a plus bx, but here we would have y equaling, all right, my a, and it says go to two decimal point, points. It looks like my a value is negative 0.05. And my b value, if I'm going to go two decimal points, looks like it's 0.01, all right, plus 0.01x. 
So let me write this as is right now. All right, and that's pretty good, but what I want us to pay attention to is that I didn't give you X and Y, I gave you T and A. So let's change the Y to temperature anomaly, and then we'll change X to T, which is T years after 1960. And there's my linear model. That's it. Um, I'm going to beef this up just a little bit. I'm going to put it in function notation. All right, so there is my linear model. That's the answer I could drop right over here. The next thing says, hey, can you use your linear model to predict the temperature anomaly in 2030? So 2030 is a little ways out, right? 2030, it extends beyond the data set I have. So in terms of, is this an example of interpolation or extrapolation? I'm gonna just highlight this. This would be extrapolation at this point. And I can spell it correctly, there we go. And it's extrapolation, again, because my data was spread out from 1960 to 2010, and 2030 is outside that data range. All right, so let's talk about a couple of ways that I could do this. Oops, I just got an email. Sorry about that. Uh, a couple of ways I could do this problem. Uh, the thing that I don't want you to do right now is I don't want you to just plug in 2030. All right, so if we were to just plug in 2030, that would be incorrect. And the reason it would be incorrect is because T is not 2030. All right, we just said that if you want to calculate your T value, you take your current year. Ooh, they capitalized my T there. Whoops. Stop that. There we go. You take your current year and you subtract out your base year. So in this case, I would take my current year of 2030. I would subtract out 1960. And let's go see what that's going to give us. So 2030 minus 1960. That means what I really want to do is plug in the year 70. So when I go into my function, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, don't get me A of 2030. Get me A 70 years after 1960. All right. And then let's go see what the temperature anomaly is predicted to be. So we would have negative 0.05 plus 0.01 times 70. And what are we looking at? We're looking at about 0.65. All right, and then the units on that, I'm going to copy and paste, this would be degrees Celsius. So that would be the answer that you would give me here. This is 0 0.65 oops, degrees Celsius. Let me get through a couple of those. All right, so we've got that by, by just plugging in. Now, because we rounded so, so severely, oh, and actually, if I look at my own direction, it said round to one decimal place, so I would just say 0.7 here. Let me go ahead and fix that. So we're getting 0.7. Um, but since we rounded so severely, it's fine. I just I, I also want to show you how you could calculate this on your calculator. So if I hit zoom 9 again, all right, there we go. If we can hit second and trace, and we can pick option 1, and we can plug 70 in. And I'm about to get an error. And let's talk about it. If I hit enter, it says, hey, there's a window error. And the reason you have a window error is because you only went 55 years after 1960, because it's trying to incorporate the fact that you had 2010 as a data value. So just pick a number larger than 70. And I'm saying 70 because that's the year that I'm plugging in for 1930, 1930, 2030. So let's try 75. That seems like a, a number larger than 55. Um, and that'll include, I should say larger than 70, because I want to just make sure I include 70. All right, whenever you adjust your window, don't hit zoom 9 again, otherwise it'll just take your x max back to 55. Hit graph, and we should see some more space off here. And I do, I can see a little bit more to the right on the x-axis. So let's try this again, second trace, option 1, and now let's plug in 70. And what's the temperature anomaly? So you can see that the round off error is actually pretty severe. We got 0.7 here when we did it by hand. It's actually closer to 1. So if you had given me either answer on the midterm, that would have been fine. And I just want you to start to see the problem with rounding earlier on. Um, so we're actually up one degree Celsius um, in terms of that temperature anomaly for 2030. All right, so with that, I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to switch over to my iPad and continue this so that we can take a look, that's right, at parts C and D. So I'm going to finish this over there. I will see you in a bit. Bye. 
Hey everyone, I just want to finish this up this problem. So just to remind you where we were, we had plugged our data, all of this stuff, into our calculator, and we ran, let me write this over here in purple, we ran stat calc 8, and then that would have given us linear regression, a plus bx, and I did l1 comma l2, almost going to run out of room, y1. Uh, and then that gave us this linear model right here, and I rounded to two decimal places. I just want to remind you I used the letters A and T instead of X and Y, and I set my base year as zero, so that would mean this was year zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And then we went ahead and we plugged in T equaling 70 down here in part B, and I picked 70 because we wanted to predict the temperature anomaly in 2030. And since 2030 is outside of our data range, we went and called that extrapolation. And then I plugged 70 in for the year, and I got about 0.65 degrees Celsius back out, but the directions here said round to one decimal. So there it is, I rounded to one decimal. And I showed you previously, if you used your graphing calculator, we actually um, had a different temperature anomaly there of one degree Celsius rather than, rather than 0.7 degrees Celsius. And that's just because we were, we were rounding our decimals off. All right, so let's, let's go to the next, next part of this problem and see what we can do here. So let me switch back to green. And it says, use your linear model to predict the year in which the temperature anomaly will reach two degrees Celsius. So in order to do that, I basically wanna set my temperature function to two degrees Celsius. And let me scroll back up just to remind myself what my linear model was. So I'm gonna set this entire thing here, negative 0.05 plus 0.01 T, I'm gonna set that to two degrees. So I will try and remember those numbers and I am gonna set negative 0.05 plus 0.01 T equal to two degrees Celsius. And let's figure out when this happens. So the first thing I wanna do is add 0.05 to either side. So I'm looking at 0.01 T, that will be equal to 2.05. And then I need to divide by 0.01. And let me head over to my calculator. I have it in front of me. You can't see it this time. But I'm going to find out that that number looks like it is 205. So going by that, keep in mind our base year was 1960. So we have 1960 plus 205. And they're telling us that in the year 2165, we're going to have a 2 degrees Celsius temperature anomaly. So let's say the year here will be 2165. Okay, so we've got that. The last thing it says to do is go ahead and interpret the slope. Now when we talk about the slope of our line, we're talking about 0.01. So I'm going to take the slope, and anytime I have the slope, this time it's 0.01, I can make it a unit ratio, meaning I can put any number as a fraction, as long as one is in the denominator. And then let's think about what the units are on this. So if I think about the units, basically this is a y value over an x value, or in our case, we would say that this was an a value over a t value, right? And the a's are temperature anomalies and t's are years. So if we really wanna look at the units here, I'm talking about degrees Celsius, per year, right? So degrees Celsius per year. And if I want to interpret that, I'm going to go ahead and write a sentence. And I'm going to say for every year that passes, the temperature anomaly increases and the reason I'm saying it increases is because the slope is positive so it increases by an average of 0 0.01 degrees Celsius per year all right so words to keep in mind is that we have this average rate of change here because if you remember from way back 
in chapter three, slopes are average rate of change, right? When you hear for the phrase rate of change, actually, let me do this in a different color, just so we have a little note here. Oh, I think I erased my little average. Let me highlight that again, average. So whenever you hear the word rate of change, think of slope. Now, when you move on into calculus, we're going to distinguish between instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change. So average rate of change is what we're doing in Math 31. All right, that's the formula that we've oops, always been using, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And when you get into calculus, you're going to learn about the instantaneous rate of change. Oops, I can almost write the word change. And that, you're going to pick up this word called a derivative. I'll leave that for math uh, 15, 16, or wherever you wind up taking calculus. But just FYI, whenever you hear average rate of change, we're talking about an algebraic slope or a slope between two points, and that's what we're dealing with here. So we're not saying that the temperature anomaly increases by exactly 0.01 degrees Celsius per year, but it averages out to 0.01 degrees Celsius per year. So there's your look at how to do this problem before you head into your midterm. Thanks so much. Bye.